These blasts may send shivers down your spine. But for Army personnel, it's just another day on the job. These strikes are carried out by drones, and they have the potential to kill. And presidents and terrorist groups are not afraid to use them. So how are they used in combat? And what happens when it all goes wrong? This is Danger Drone. As of yet unconfirmed that a plane has hit the World Trade Center. Oh my goodness, there's another one. It seems to be on purpose. Something else just hit. A very large plane just oh flew directly over my building, and there's been another collision. There's explosion now, raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way! These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. For those of us who support the course I'm advocating, that means all the dangers of war. Okay, we're about five mics out. So my name is Paul Ischenko. I am a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army and Doctorate of International Relations, focusing mainly on public opinion for drone warfare. For the most part, when you ask people what drone warfare is, they have a tendency to conflate drone warfare with targeted killing of terrorists, which is predominantly how the United States has used the capability globally for the better part of two decades. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives. Moreover, America's actions are legal. We were attacked on 9-11. Within a week, Congress overwhelmingly authorized the use of force. But the reality is that drones, defined as an unmanned aerial system, have been around for centuries. And the initial sort of drone would have to be like a balloon. Of course, it's almost like back to the future with China's use of a balloon over US territory recently. It takes upwards of 300 people to use a drone globally. That includes maintainers, intelligence analysts. Furthermore, these operations are based in large measure on human intelligence that is actually gathered on the battlefield. I authorized a precision strike that would remove him from the battlefield once and for all. None of his family members were hurt and there were no civilian casualties. Now. Justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. I serve as an intelligence officer and still serve as an intelligence officer and deployed for many years in support of these operations. And so my particular scope of duties and responsibilities was just garnering intelligence across various mediums, whether it's imagery intelligence, human intelligence, to provide a recommendation to commanders and senior officials in our government to either prosecute a strike or not. If you take a look at the broad arc of warfare for let's say the last hundreds of years, what you're gonna find is that drones do for the most part achieve the intended benefit, which is using strikes surgically against a target to remove something while protecting against civilian casualties. Let's, uh, let's hold up and look around here. I know those two guys, I saw them flying apart. We are at war with an organization that right now would kill as many Americans as they could if we did not stop them first. So this is a just war. 
the idea of, of trying to justify 20 years on what was really one of the most catastrophic episodes in foreign, British foreign policy, British and American foreign policy, is, is just beyond the pale. Well, well, it, so Adam, Adam is defending it. So what, what, well, well, the hard logic is Saddam Hussein should have been left in power. I mean, left to, left to do what he was doing to his own people, left what we believe potentially to be growing uh, capacity on, of weapons of mass destruction. A lot of war ethicists, to include my colleagues in Australia, have called this post-heroic warfare, have called it morally disskilled, nothing but a desk job, uh, warfare by PlayStation. The reality is when you talk to especially Americans, the average citizen, the calculation of physical risk does not really bear on the way they adjudicate legitimacy or not. Stated differently, they really do not care about the disconnection of an operator from a drone platform. Our preference is always to detain, interrogate, and prosecute. America cannot take strikes wherever we choose. Our actions are bound by consultations with partners. At my direction, the United States military eliminated the world's top terrorist, Qasem Soleimani. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The other thing too, I would tell you as well is even Trump's use of a drone, which is considered broadly illegal um, by way of international humanitarian law and even contestable by way of domestic policy and law as well, was designed to achieve an important social goal in part, which was resetting negotiations with Iran pursuant to denuclearization. I like to obey the law, but think of it. They kill our people, they blow up our people, and then we have to be very gentle with their cultural institutions. But I'm okay with it. It's okay with me. Yeah, yeah I, I got, got that guy too. I saw him die earlier. He was in 40 rounds. Correct. The modal or average U.S. counterterrorism drone strikes abroad results in something like 0.53 or 1.15 civilian casualties. What we find, and based on my operational experiences as well, managing the intelligence for these strikes, is that they actually do reduce civilian casualties to a high degree relative to previous conflict. We will never, unfortunately, as tragic as this is, reduce civilian casualties to zero or null. I am now convinced that as many as 10 civilians, including up to seven children, were tragically killed in that strike. This strike was taken in the earnest belief that it would prevent an imminent threat to our forces and the evacuees at the airport. But it was a mistake, and I offer my sincere apology. We have this sense that legitimacy for these drone strikes are based upon the degree of risk that a soldier incurs on the battlefield. There is a way that the United States and other Western countries can further reduce civilian casualties, and that is through the notion of near certainty. And so adopted by President Obama in 2011 and then reinstituted by President Biden months ago, this is the standard that no strike will be approved abroad unless it protects against civilian casualties. Big boom, big boom!